Okay, I'm introducing Wahu Kara, who comes to us from Nairobi. Uh, she is a, a very well-known activist uh, with women in her country and against uh, the, the debt that the uh, World Bank and IMF have placed on the countries of the Global South. And uh, I want to welcome her because she, you're going to love what she says. I bring greetings from Africa and Kenya to all of you sisters. Habari zenu. So, as an activist, I also like making others activists. So, uh, we will charge one another by just introducing some Kiswahili uh, powerful words capturing the moment as to why we are here. When I say wakati ni, which means this is time, then you say ni sasa. It is actually this time. Wakati ni sasa. Wakati ni sasa. Wakati ni sasa. This is the time. So I am in the right place at the right time. And I say this observing all protocol, thanking all those who have made this event possible. And uh, those with us here, and even those that are not here, let us not forget them in this acknowledgement. I was requested to speak to feminist thinking, in the context of African experience in the struggle for space, place, and contribution to human prosperity. This is a subject I love speaking to because I remember my maternal grandmother, her name Wamogwaruwa. While I was just about five or so, and we used to be many grandchildren at her home at one time or the other, she would pick any of us, and in particular the first time she picked on me and said, Wow, you know what? A woman's place is in the struggle. And women of your age have five children. And I was just about four or five. And that would be to motivate you to begin to participate in what would be either collecting firewood or going for water or doing any other participation within the home and the community. So I loved hearing my grandmother say that to me and I do remember with a lot of nostalgia how energized I used to feel from that one statement, a woman's place is in the struggle. And surprisingly, very late in life, a friend of mine also brought me a key holder from Zimbabwe with the same message, a woman's place is in the struggle. Then something else is so very important, it is not only a woman's place is in the struggle, but in my own uh, Kikuyu, uh, one of the major saying that keeps vibrating in my mind is that you know what? A woman is only pronounced dead when she's buried. A woman is only pronounced dead when she's buried. Then I wondered, what is this? And I was an inquisitive child. And they would want to continue telling me, yes, unless she's buried, and people see she's buried, they would still see that she will rise and do what she needs to do in this place and space. She has taken in struggle in contributing and making human prosperity real. What am I trying to say? I'm only but trying to say that the feminist thinking of the African 
perhaps has not been captured, perhaps has not been written, perhaps has been not told. And I'm really delighted that I can be here tonight to contribute to tell you that the truth and nothing else but the truth is that there would never be any society or humanity or life for that matter, be it human or environmental or that planet, if the women were not fair. So for me, I love being a woman. Even if another world came, I would still want to be a woman. And I would die being a woman because I know even in death, like my grandmother was attesting to me, my life will still be beating loud and clear. And that is why I'm here to tell you that Africa is not that dead continent many people want to talk about. Africa is not a poor continent in ideas, in knowledge, in anything. And Africa actually is not poor. Leave those World Bank statistics saying that every second three, that three children are dying. Yes, they are dying. Leave about HIV and AIDS and all those diseases. All that is happening. But what is very, very important, I want to tell you, if the world has a future, the future is coming from Africa. Woo! And I'm not ashamed, or not only Africa, from Kenya, my country. And that's why I am here, for we are making it happen, and it is going to happen. And this is because throughout history, the African woman has taken their right of space and place in making a contribution to human prosperity. We do not only give life, but we guarantee sustainability of life, and we guarantee protection of life, and we make sure that we protect that life by any means, be it even giving up our own lives. And that's why throughout history, which speaks for itself, you can ask, what is this miracle that has made the African people who they are? You people of this part of the world, you are very close to the United States of America. You do know the, 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 the legacy of the conscience that we continue suffering from of slave trade and slavery. Interrogate it. You shall see the truth that my grandmother gave me about that experience. We come to colonialism. You still see the same trend. And even now, with neocolonialism and its best perfection of globalization, you still see we are taking our right of space and place in making this contribution. And that's why I feel very privileged to be connected with this discourse of gift economy and gift giving. I feel so privileged that I can travel from Kenya, Africa, to come here to connect with the sisters who are saying and are standing out to say that the so-called developed world is not developed, is a dead world. It's a world that we need to be reconstructed. It's a world that no other world should emulate or want to be associated. I have no apology in saying so. And I say this because we do know the women of this part of the world have been denied to participate for who they are as women and have been constructed to fit and to serve the patriarchy market economy, which has a history, and I know I've interacted with the scholars among ourselves who have written extensively this history and explanation. So it was not an accident. It was a deliberate design. And it was a total conquest of occupation to dominate and control for the benefit of, matri uh, of patriarchy market economy. Why I am here, and perhaps not by accident or coincidence, is to reinforce that no